Thank you very much. The next speaker is Paul Murphy on behalf of the Green. Go ahead. Uh, what we see in Kazakhstan today is severe and large-scale regression in the field of human rights and in the field of democratic rights. However, this regression, seen for example by the brutal crackdown in Janozen, which saw at least 17 people killed, did not prevent the German government from signing a lucrative trade deal for rare earths this February. Here we have an example of fine words about human rights, not matched by actions, particularly when it comes to vested economic interests. So let's have some action here. I'd ask the High Representative's representative to give a clear commitment that the negotiations of the new Partnership and Cooperation Agreement will be suspended until there is meaningful change and until all political prisoners, including Vladimir Kozlov and human rights defender Vadim Karamshin, have been unconditionally released. All trumped-up charges and investigations against the 73, 70, 43 strikers and their supporters awaiting trial and the leaders of the political opposition must be dropped, including those against the leader of socialist movement Kazakhstan, Ayanur Kormanov, and the leader of the independent trade union, Jan Artu, Yesenbek Ukteshbaev. It is those who gave the order to shoot down peaceful protesters who should be in the dock, not these opposition activists. I welcome Natalia Sokolova's release from prison, but all charges against her must be dropped and there must be no restrictions on her trade union activity. The Kazakh government is suggesting that they have learned lessons, but actions speak much, much louder than words. And their actions suggest that actually the crackdown on workers' rights and democratic rights is continuing and going even further. For example, February's amendments to the Labour Code allows the dismissal of workers involved in strike action, makes it easier to dismiss trade union representatives during strike negotiations and legalises lockouts. The report of the General Prosecutor's Office has insufficiently accounted for the role of the state forces in the events in Janozen, and the number of people who died in given in that report is massively disputed by eyewitnesses. An independent international inquiry is still desperately needed. If I am granted a visa, I will be travelling to Janozen as part of a delegation of trade unionists, human rights activists, journalists, to try and help bring out the truth. Thank you.